This is a Dubai Eye 103.8 podcast. I'm Helen Farmer. Great to have you with us on the Afternoons with Helen Farmer podcast. Conscious uncoupling hit the headlines a number of years ago, but what about conscious coupling? We were speaking to a husband and wife team who did exactly that, plus their advice for any singletons listening. Dr. Jean from City Vet was here to answer all of your questions and looking ahead to the half-term break. Chances are you've heard the term conscious uncoupling a few years ago when Gwether Paltrow and Chris Martin used it during their separation. But what about conscious coupling? For many of us, we meet someone, connect with them, fall in love, get married, job done. So is this a different way of choosing a life partner, an unconscious way? Are we overthinking it? How did you meet your partner? Let us know. I'm, I'm endlessly fascinated by how people fell in love uh, with their Story partner. We're so- meeting now a conscious couple. Dr. Ihab Hamane is uh, the founder of the BU movement. And Mada Habi is a transformational coach for women. And yes, they are a couple. Hello, both. Dr. Ihab, how are you this afternoon? Good, good, good. How are you, Helen? I'm so pleased actually to hear the story of the love story of that 29 <laughs> years old. Such a cute Gorgeous, one. <laughs> isn't it? Um, I find this really fascinating how people met. So I want to know, Ihab, how did you meet Madhya? What were, what were the circumstances? That's, uh, that's an interesting memory. Actually, I was back that time doing my PhD and I came to Jordan just like uh, to have a course for a couple of three, four days. And for some reason, one of my friends, he insisted for me to go to a sacred songs dance, you know, the hippie kind of dancing (laughs) (laughs) and singing. I was like, man, I'm not into it, but he just pushed too much. So I said, "Okay, I'll go there. And there I went and I saw Madiha, the love of my life. She was in her element. She was singing the sacred songs. And I was the creeper there, just uh, looking, total creeper. <laughs> just totally looking at her, you know, that guy. The that footage just is there. still there. Yeah. <laughs> Madia, tell me then, what were your first impressions of Ihab, apart from being creepy? <laughs> <laughs> so funny enough, at the time, I also had a community called Amman Conscious Community. So the conscious community for Amman and Jordan. And Ihab had been posting on my group for a long time. So oh. he was that guy that had been posting all his videos dominating the wall. And our first interaction was me telling him to slow down with the posts. (laughs) Chill out. So when he came, he was that guy. (laughs) And when he asked me out, I thought it was a business collaboration or like some kind of collaboration we were going to do. I didn't get the message until a bit into the date where there was some hand touching that I was like, Mm. oh, okay. (laughs) It's like that, is it? Um, So tell us then, you've been married for two years now, together for five. Um, So we're talking about conscious coupling. Um, Ihab, did you consciously approach the relationship compared to how you'd, well, how is it different to previous relationships, I guess is what I'm really asking. Yes, 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 it's absolutely because when I met Madiha, I was already in my purpose. So I was already committed and devoted to my purpose. I left my path in engineering and I was fully, fully, fully uh, pursuing the path of uh, of coaching and healing and sharing the message, transformational message with the world. So what was different for me, the intentionality. I wasn't there just to have fun or even to look for someone to lift me up or motivate me or just make me happy. I was there because I wanted um, a lady to create an empire with. I was a lady, the love of my life to create. Yeah, Basically, I was seeking the queen that I want to create the empire with. So it was an intention that knowing that I want to serve the Middle East, I want to change the world, I want to create a movement that is actually changing people inside out. And I was, um, I knew I needed the queen that oh. not just, uh, I, knew, I knew I needed the queen to be with me to create that empire. So it was a different intention than just, I want to date or just, I want to hang mm-hmm. out. It, it was a different intentionality. And that's why, that's what I knew when I met her, that she is the queen of my life for sure. Oh, oh. oh guys. Madhya, what about you? How do you define conscious relationships or partnerships? It sounds like you were really entering into this romantically, but also, you know, building an empire. So conscious coupling, how do you define it? So like you have said, when we met, we had both left the old path we were taking in our careers to pursue our truth, our passion, um, the things we really felt we came to this earth to create and be. And so starting from that point, there was already a wider space to 
really get to know each other on such a truthful level. No games, no playing, mm. but really sharing what our values were, what we stood for. And we were both revolutionary. I didn't match what most of my family and, you know, community <laughs> wanted from me. They wanted me to just continue the career I was on. When I quit, they were like, are you crazy? But I had chosen happiness. I had chosen truth. I had chosen really honoring my needs as a woman. And as women, we really live in a completely different way if, if we listen to what's happening. So when I met him, we had both had enough inner clarity that when we fused both our clarities together, we could navigate creating a more wholesome partnership that re really respected who we were as humans, as souls, as man and woman. And that wasn't just kind of like random, okay, there's butterflies. I mean, there were some butterflies, but um, I won't go into that now. <laughs> no, we, lo we love the butterflies. Guys, we're keeping you with us. I've got lots of questions for you and we've got some advice, I think, for those who might be looking for love. I'm curious, guys, about... Thinking about, you know, being single and, and looking to mingle, I guess, because we've had a message here from F saying, how can you phrase on online dating bios that you're seriously looking for a real relationship without sounding scary? Ihab, what's your take <laughs> on that? Well, my take is very, very simple. It's, it's all about clarity, right? Because I think women, especially the feminine, they have a very powerful ability to read the signals, to read the energy behind the words. So it's very, very hard to fool a woman. That's why women, they feel unsafe or safe around a certain man because they usually they read the intentionality behind it. So it's not about how, it's not like a CV, how can I put like my greatest qualities outside? It's about clarity. So for example, I remember when I met Madiha, I told her, I'm very, very, very serious here. And I don't mean I'm serious here like I'm going to open a business. I'm serious. I said, you know what? Here's what I stand for. Those are my values. This is what I want in life. This is what I'm willing to sacrifice. This is what I'm not willing to sacrifice. So when I told her, you know what? Even if you're the love of my life, even if I have amazing, like, even if I love you more than anything else, one thing I'm not willing to sacrifice is my dreams. Mm -hmm. Because if I sacrifice my dreams for you, then I'm not going to be a happy person even to serve you. So it's all about being clear what you stand for. What is it you want in yourself and in that woman? And that can show even in the way you describe yourself online. Mm -hmm. So again, it comes back to clarity. If you're trying to play the games, if you're trying to be manipulative, if you're trying to create the games that people are used to in a relationship, then you're going to get a person who's exactly like that, who's going to manipulate you, who want to play games with you. But if you're someone who's clear, who wants what you want, then you can put that online and not need being needy about it. And you were very clear. I remember it was our third date or something like that within the first week. And he said, I know people wait to say this, but I love you. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa there. <laughs> but OK. But, is, but that. isn't that interesting that, you know, you're saying there about being scary. But if you're being clear and truthful, the people who are scared are, are not the ones for you. And that's a good way of filtering mm. them out of the process. And the ones that stick around and understand that, you know, maybe they have the same, you know, needs at that mm. at that time in their life. You'll you'll find each other. A really interesting follow up question here. No name on this one saying after how long or how many dates should you quote define the relationship? Now, I say this as a British person and we do not date as such well we certainly didn't when I was living there it was very much a case of you might meet through friends you'll have a few nights out mm. you might end up living together you might reluctantly call each other boyfriend and girlfriend and then you're kind of married <laughs> the thought of mm. sitting down and going shall we define the relationship makes me feel nauseous um, but mm. as I said this is very kind of typically English thing so I wondered what do you tend to recommend about it may be intentions or defining the relationship. You, have, you did it early on. It sounds like you're perhaps far more in tune with your feelings and desires than the vast majority <laughs> of us. What, Very what, much. What, 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 what so tends clear. to work, do you think? So, so I will tell you the thing. Before we start thinking of how can we define a relationship, let's define our definitions so if you want to say, okay, marriage, what is marriage to you? Because if your definition of marriage is the definition that your parents or your mm. culture or what you get used to what marriage is, which is like signing a paper, then what you're asking from the other person, let's sign a paper so I'll make sure you don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you have to actually go back to what your definition is. So for me, my definition of marriage was very clear and it's a very personal definition. 
I want a divine union. I want someone to share the empire. I want a creator with me. I want someone to journey that journey of life. I want two energies to become one. So actually we create as one. So that's where it comes to how you define those definitions. Because mm-hmm. if you don't have a definition for you, for them, usually your insecurities are kicking there to try to make sure that person won't leave me. So I have to put them in that box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it comes back to your own definition of it. Um, Madiha, yeah. can I can I ask you um, about where you think you might have gone wrong in the past? And I know a lot of it is about meeting the right person at the right time and you being in the right mindset. But what have you recognised with other couples or even in your own behaviours in the past where it just hasn't clicked, it hasn't worked? Mm. Yeah, the previous relationships were very, very different. I didn't know myself. So what I brought to the relationship was also this young kind of lost wacky girl. And so the relationships were very turbulent, I would say the least. And with Ihab, by then I had really grounded who I am and what I desire and and what are my priorities in life. Mm-hmm. And so he was able to meet me there. But what I would maybe reflect to what he said or add to it is that for some people, this direct thing really works. And for me, Ihab was the first person who came into my life in that way, so direct. And that was very appealing as a woman. He was very clear, very direct. And I would say it's always about this dance between the directness and the mystery. And and really navigating between those poles of like being clear, but also knowing there's so much to discover. And even when he first asked me out, because he was living in Scotland for his PhD, I said no for the long distance. I'm like... This was fun. I enjoyed your company. But, you know, when I see you again, I'll see you again. And he was like, what do you mean? And so (laughs) there's a navigation that needs to happen. And maybe more so for women. You know, we go Mm -hmm. shopping. We go a million places. We we're not so directed in our in our consciousness, in our mind versus men. They have this direction, this goal. They were they'll go fully for it when they know it. So it's fine to have that dance between the certainty and the uncertainty until those moments of clarity come. And so one of the nights before he left, we were out with friends. And I told him, you know, that question you asked, I said, I changed my mind. Maybe we can try this out. (laughs) And so that didn't happen directly. But when I reflected and even my mom was like, he's such a gentleman. He's opening the doors, this and that, like, give it a chance. And then I was like, you know what? There's a good feeling. Why not explore it? So sometimes it does take some layers and subtleties and building that energy, not necessarily just landing there and the rest is history we've got questions Uh about about arranged marriages which i want to touch on as well and a message asking how i met my husband Hmm. home or away on afternoons with helen farmer we're talking love how to find it how to keep it with uh, one couple who perhaps took an unusual approach to their relationship from the outset conscious coupling Dr. Ihab Hamane is with us. He is the founder of the BU Movement and his wife, Madiha B, a transformational coach for women. We've got lots of questions and comments on this topic. And it's really, as you're saying, about knowing yourself, about knowing what your values are. Ihab, you know, you were saying there earlier, you knew what your goals were, what you were willing and not willing to compromise on, even if Madiha turned out to be the absolute love of your life because as you say if that was she was going to hold you back in some way there probably would end up being resentment a question here saying most importantly is how to maintain a relationship silent compromise is the source of most issues in a relationship clear communication is key for most successful relationships you have is that something you have witnessed in your own relationship and and those that you see around you Yes, I agree. And I feel uh, the society and most people my age have been programmed about a certain idea that a marriage or relationship is the end. (laughs) And that's so true. And yet that's why even when we watch the movies. Happily ever after. Exactly. And then what? (laughs) <laughs> exactly. When you watch, and then it starts. And then it's just a different the set movies, of problems. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's exactly when you watch the movies. Usually the story we see, two people having a lot of drama till they start to, like they married and then the movie ends. Mm-hmm. Actually, the movie should start after the day of the marriage or after the day of the relationship. And movies about marriages are usually really tragic yes Um, that's on the other end but how about a really happy marriage yes but here's the thing i feel the biggest transformation that will take place in your relationship in your marriage whatever you wanna wanna um, put it under whatever context it's really accepting that it's a process of inner work within yourself and within Mm. the relationship itself 
Because for me, I always knew, or at least when I started to get into consciousness, I absolutely knew that going into a relationship, I'm going into a booster for evolution. So that doesn't necessarily going to feel nice all the Would time. Be easy. Exactly. And that doesn't mean it's easy all the time. It means I'm accepting I'm in the relationship to be a mirror for me, mm-hmm. to expose my darkness, to expose my insecurities, to expose my childhood traumas so I can heal it. And at the same time, to expose my greatness, to expose mm-hmm. my light. So I wasn't in it just for I want someone to make my life easier. I'm in it for someone to help me evolve in like a steroid. And to help, <laughs> yeah, and to help them too. Um, yeah. And um, I've been called out on being nosy, asking where did I meet my husband? Um, I met my husband on a blind date. As it happens, we were set up by my mm-hmm. then boss and his then colleague. And we, this is back in the day, exchanged BBM pin numbers and had some back and forth. <laughs> I know, I know, believe me. I used to love my Blackberry. <laughs> Um, and then had a first date. But as it's interesting that you said there from from the beginning, no games. That's exactly what we were like. I don't know if it was just the age and stage that we were at, but we both obviously went on that first date with the intention of meeting someone that we had a connection with on email and BBM. And mm-hmm. But yeah, no games. I always had given previous kind of dates and boy- boyfriends awful nicknames and he never got a nickname. His name is Nick though. Um, but it does lead me <laughs> on to a question about... Arranged marriages. I'm, I'm curious, Mdiha, you know, when we look at arranged marriages, they've come together through families and not dating. And you know, like back in the day, you know, Poonam's mum and dad met once and had one of the best marriages she's ever seen. So is that a conscious way of bringing two people together? And, you know, in their headspace and intentions, what, what's your take on that? To be honest, if you asked me this in my 20s, I'd be like, no way, I want to fall in love and and all of this. But in a funny way, this kind of happened because I had a no, no, no. And then my mom arranged it and said, go for it. So she arranged this marriage in a very comedic way. Um, I feel every culture is different. And some of these traditions that are passed on through our culture, they had a lot of gifts. Like my grandmother and grandfather had something like that. And they lived a whole lifetime together, very beautifully, very complimentary. Mm-hmm. Our generation is different. Our generation, there's more individuality. And often our values, our needs, our desires are quite different from our parents. They don't really get what is the, the life we want to create? They don't even get the careers we've chosen. So it's difficult for them to know what it is we truly look for. So unless there is a really amazing alignment, agreement, understanding between parents and child, I think our generation, we're more out there really calling for, for what resonates with our soul and our heart. So I don't know, to each their own, but that's kind of where oh, I'm at. A message here saying he was the boy next door. I wasn't very fond of him initially, but he grew on me and it actually turned out to be the man of my dreams. It's been 30 years and I fall in love with him over and over again, quite frequently. If you're listening, I love you, babe. There's no name on this. I need to know who you are so we can, we can tell mm. you. But I'm curious to, give, uh, to get the, the last take from you, Dr. Ehab. If anyone is listening today who is single and really wants a relationship, really wants to meet their person, um, oh, it's from uh, it's from Rashid. Thank you, thank you, I'm Rashid. Um, tell me, um, what would be your one bit of advice for? And I'm not going to say soulmate because I hope my husband's not listening. Sure. I, don't, I don't necessarily believe in one person for you know, it, it, it ever. Yeah. You know, there could be lots of people out there you could find love and be very happy with. But finding someone that you've got a real true connection with once you've established exactly who you are and what you want. Sure. So I will start from the end. It's just like even the word soulmate. We hear the teacher lately and he has mm. a very lovely quote. He said, it's better not to look for soulmate. It's better actually to create. to create a soulmate. So to make the relationship in a soulmate, which is actually it sounds even more practical. Mm. <laughs> Instead of waiting for the one, why not to create a connection that does feel like very beautiful connection with the one you have right now? So I get it when people want a relationship. I used to be that person. I really wanted a relationship. I totally, totally get it. So the one thing I would give an advice for to accept that life works through evolution. So if your reality right now is a single, this is not just an invitation to be just looking for a relationship all the time. Mm. This is an invitation to actually start creating a relationship with yourself. So you're actually more luring, more magnetic for a relationship that will support your soul evolution in the and next year. And less needy. 
Exactly. Yeah, because and we not all watching. know. <laughs> You yeah, can smell it when yeah, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. They, they say needy is creepy, and I actually <laughs> I, I agree with that. <laughs> even you know, even in a simple sales, like if you want to try to sell something and you're super needy for that sales to happen, usually it's a it's the opposite of attractive energy. But if you really believe in what you're selling, it's very attractive. So same for you. If you're in if you're single now, if you're not in a relationship, instead of just looking for the relationship. How about starting actually to get to know yourself more? Mm. How about actually you start to understand your value more? How about to start falling in love with yourself more? How about starting following your passion more? And those stuff are super magnetic for the right person to come into your life. And I just want to add a little thing to that, which is let go of the timeline. Yes. You don't get to choose when you meet that person. Mm -hmm. Let go and trust that that person will show up when you are ready and when they are ready. You might be ready and they might still be working on themselves. So trust the process. Guys, thank you so much for your insights this afternoon. I could hear the love coming through the call from, from both of you. <laughs> and I really You're do, welcome. I really, really do appreciate it. Both, thank you so, so much joining us there, Dr. Ihab Hermane, and founder of the BU Movement, and Medi Habib, transformation coach for women.